Um, the Africa workshop uh, started by drawing up some of the main challenges that are at stake on the African continent. And we identified three of them. So on the one hand, there is obviously uh, providing more opportunities of employment to the growing, uh, uh, to the youngest population in Africa. Africa's population is getting younger and younger, and this is an issue that should be considered because otherwise it uh, comes with some consequences that I will come on uh, later on. Um, also, there is the issue of managing the economic sovereignty of the states, uh, and with this comes the need for a greater economic integration on the regional and the continental level. So, on the economic aspects, some of the main challenges that remain is that Africa uh, as a continent is still quite fragmented. And we can see that because most of the inter-African trade only represents a small share of the global trade at the world level. So African uh, states do not trade enough with each other. And this is because there are some barriers to that. And there are barriers that need to be lifted in order for the African countries to start uh, trading with each other. In addition to that, we also pointed out that most of the trade in, uh, in between the African states is, uh, is composed of manufacturing as well as agriculture. Whereas uh, on the outside of the continent, it is mainly uh, under the form of um, uh, industry, uh, industry and natural resources. So African countries need to bring their efforts together in order to increase the inter-African uh, trade. So obviously the solutions to that is greater integrations, but there are some um, hiccups that block this regional integrations. And uh, as uh, Prime Minister Zansu uh, has explained, the transaction costs for trade are still very high in Africa. They're still really high and they undermine the potential of Africans to trade between, between uh, each other. And they, they are the highest in the world and this is still a, a main challenge for them. There is uh, recently uh, the uh, African Continental Free Trade uh, Agreement that was uh, brought up. It was praised as a great initiative to address in the issue of the, the need for greater integrations. However, there are some uh, technicalities that block this agreement from being properly implemented. And this was pointed out by Dr. Dadouj, who explained that there are three main challenges to the African Continental Free Trade Agreement. First of all, there is the need for more inclusiveness of this agreement. Why? Because not all of the countries have signed. It's probably 45 or 46 countries who signed this agreement. Nigeria has not signed the agreement yet, which is one of the biggest economies on the continent. And although it's, it's said that it will implement it, it still has not done so. And, and Nigeria still has some complex political uh, economy, so we are waiting to see what will happen out of this. The second technicality of this agreement is that they need to explain better what they mean by liberalizing 90% of trade. Do they mean 90% of the volume of trade, which is fine, or do they need 90% of the tariff lines? In that case, it could be problematic, because countries can find ways to navigate around it and skip some of the terms of the agreement. And finally, uh, the, um, the other uh, issue of this uh, agreement is the rules of origins. The rules of origins, and we see that very often at the WTO, many FTAs are abused because people change the, uh, the origins of the product. And so the rules of origins really should be strictly regarded in order for the African Continental Free Trade Agreement not to be abused. So those are some of the um, 
of the economic challenges that still exist on the continent. We also had the perspective of Europe uh, with the Minister Elisabeth Kigou, who explained to us where, you, where Europe stands in the middle of this. So she stressed the need for Europe to rethink a partnerships together with Africa for a partnership that is more of a win-win uh, partnerships, that's more collaborative. And she also stressed the responsibility of the European continent to rethink its perception of the African continent. Europe has to counter the populist discourse because the populist discourse is gaining more importance. With this, obviously, it will lead to Europe closing its borders to Africa. If Europe closes its borders to Africa, obviously Africa will have to seek new partners. It will have to seek new partners for addressing its need for infrastructure development. And this is something that could be really problematic if the, the, the populist fear dominates on, on the European continent. So there was also in the middle of this economy, partnerships, comes a very important point, which is the migration, the human mobility capital. And this has been addressed as well during the workshop, because with an increase in growth, the human uh, mobility will necessarily increase. People are seeking new opportunities abroad, and the continent should be ready to welcome those people who can contribute to the growth of their continent as well. And this was also brought up because we need to understand that migrants do not come without, um, the migrant should not be perceived as a threat, but rather as an opportunity to contribute to the growth of the uh, Europe con European continent, but also to the African continent. And now, moving on to an example of how African countries can work together. And here I would like to bring up one uh, concrete example that was uh, explained to us by uh, Chairman and President Mustafa Tarab from the involvement of OCP Group in Africa. So OCP Group is involved with different African partners, with different African countries, and beyond just selling fertilizer, it actually works with the locals in order to adapt the products to meet the benefits and to meet the specificities of African soils. And this comes with some work that has been done on the field with many uh, fertili uh, fertility maps that were conducted in order to understand the specificities of every soil and to produce fertilizers that are adaptable to the, to the needs of those soils. And with this, they br brought up very innovative ways to collaborate with African countries. So uh, depending on the different natural resources that every country has, the, the Moroccan experience comes with phosphates and fertilizers, while the others come with other uh, components that are then uh, brought together uh, in order to present products that are adaptable. And so in this, it's a, a great example again, whereby the African countries can collaborate together to address the need for more fertilizers for the agriculture in order, instead of going abroad and seeking products from outside the, the continent. And finally, just to um, bring up another point on uh, the free trade agreement. Uh, Prime Minister Lionel Zansu also pointed out the, uh, the fact that in Benin, for example, 7.5% 7 of the GDP comes from taxes that are on exports. And this is huge, and this undermines the production and uh, undermines the, the local production and uh, is a barrier to uh, the production going outside of the country. So this is also something that maybe the continent has to address. And finally, uh, I would like to end up on a note uh, that was brought up by uh, former Prime Minister Aide Mariam Dizalin from Ethiopia, who said that Africa is not a battleground 
for the other powers. Africa, we should stop with this dichotomy of Africa, Europe, or Africa, China, or Africa, United States. Africa is a growing power, is, has its place on the global scene and should be addressed as a partner like the others. It is not a field for battle for the foreign partners. Thank you very much.